Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 28. You shall not make any cuttings in the flesh, in your flesh for the dead. Nor tattoo any marks on you. I am the Lord. So our Lord made that a real specific command. So if you got tattoos, that's something that you have to repent for and ask the Lord for forgiveness and not do it again. If you've been shaving, the, shaving your beard, shaving the edges of your beard, shaving the edges of your hair, as simple as it may seem, if you've been doing that, you have to ask the Lord for forgiveness and not do it anymore. That's a sin. If you've been eating eating meat with blood in it, if you've been eating meat with blood in it, if you like your steaks rare, most so-called Negroes don't. But if you like your steak rare, you gotta stop doing that. You gotta ask the Lord for forgiveness. Most people wouldn't think about those things because they try to normalize it in society, which is the same thing that Alexander the time period from Alexander the Great, that's the same thing they were trying to push on the people. This is 1st Maccabees in the book of the Apocrypha, which is a section of the Bible that they tried to keep away from us. First Maccabees, First Maccabees chapter 1 and verse 41, moreover King Antios, who was an Edomite, a so-called white man, wrote to his whole kingdom. This was during the time of the Greeks. And if you get a, a, a normal a so-called normal King James version Bible, it don't mention the Greeks, but it doesn't go into the into real detail about the period of, the, of time when we were under the Grecian captivity because they tried to keep it out. Moreover, King Antios, who was an Edomite, so-called white man, wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his law, his laws, so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So that should tell you right then and there that that same energy is still trying to push itself through the world. They're still trying to normalize and make their own laws and try to have everybody follow it which is where Christianity comes into play, Islam comes into play, Catholicism comes into play, Mormons, Jehovah Witness, is trying to group you in to a religion. So now they can feed you whatever type of meat, whatever type of spiritual meat that they want to, and you're gonna believe whatever, they t whatever, whatever bull crap they got to hand out because your grandmother believed it because your grandfather believed it. Which is why our Lord tells us, do not think that I came to bring uh, uh, peace, but division. Because he's gonna start dividing the households. You're gonna have young men and women not listening to their parents. And not in a disrespectful manner. Simply saying, if your mother wants you to eat pork because she made it for dinner, you're not gonna disobey the law, statutes, and commandment of the Most High. And your mother might say, I, I brought you into this world, I could take you out. That's a lie. The Heavenly Father brought you into this world through His only begotten Son. And He could take you out. But as I said, if your mother tries to hand you pork for dinner, if your mother tries to hand you pork for dinner, you do better pushing the whole plate away because that, that pork has already touched the foods on the plate. You do better not even touching the plate. Let her know respectfully. 
But what did our Lord tell us? Do not touch the carcasses of those abominable animals. So we're not even supposed to handle pork. We're not even supposed to touch pork. We're not even supposed to touch crabs. We're not even supposed to touch lobster. So if you're working a job where you handle seafood, our Lord tells us that we, we uh, are we to obey man or the most high? You really care about a dollar bill that you're gonna disobey the most high? I can't give anybody advice. I can't give anybody advice, but I'm not gonna go out looking for a job handling pork all day. Even if you have gloves on. Leviticus chapter 11, shall I get chapter 19 and verse 29. Do not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a harlot, lest the land fall into harlotry and the land become full of wickedness, which has happened to our people. And they try to normalize it. And I don't just mean actual back page, actual back page, uh, hardcore prostitution, but even Instagram could be a place for you to prostitute yourself. You got men looking at you fantasizing. You got women looking at you fantasizing. Why do you think uh, OnlyFans is so popular? All these things are avenues to slowly get you off course. All these things are avenues to slowly destroy you from the inside out. All these things are different tactics that they use to destroy your morale. You shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. A sanctuary is a dwelling place. So your body, your temple, your vessel, that's the Lord's sanctuary. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Give no regard to mediums. Give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord, your power. So a familiar spirit is conjuring up the dead, which is where Dio de los Muertos comes into play. You so-called Latinos, you so-called Haitians, that's something that needs to be cut out. Our Lord tells us, he tells us that he does not permit a sorcerer to live. Another thing that they try to get you with, and I just heard Chlamydia Harris, the vice president, I just heard her talking about love your neighbor. You should get the you should get the one-two uppercut, the jab, because you love your neighbor. It could be a stranger. Well, what does our Lord tell us? Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor. Do not bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance, nor bear a grudge against the children of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. I'm going to repeat verse 17 to 18 again. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor. You shall not bear... You shall not bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance, nor bear a grudge against the children of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself, I am the Lord. So our Lord tells us that our brother is the brother of our people. Our neighbor is the neighbor of our people. But they've used these sayings to deceive many people, which is why the Lord tells us in the latter times, Men shall return to their own families. As he said, he's coming to bring division.
1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Most High? And that the Spirit of the Most High dwells in you? This is Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 8. When the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, and Jacob is the place of his inheritance. So our Lord tells us that the nation of Israel is the Lord's people. And I'll get another scripture in Deuteronomy. Shall I get Exodus chapter 29 and verse 45? I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their power. And they shall know that I am the Lord, their power, who brought them up out of the land of Egypt, that I may dwell among them. I am the Lord, the most of their power. So our Lord tells us that he dwells among the children of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Seminole Native Indians. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5. Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments just as the Lord my power commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore be careful to observe them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So if the Bible was made just for the, 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 the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Seminole Native Indians. And these are the same people that the so-called white man has been killing, has been destroying. Don't you think that, that they would try to cover it up and act like it, would, it never happened and try to deceive you? As I said before, our Lord tells us that he dwells among the children of Israel. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 once more. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Most High? and that the spirit of the Most High dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of the Most High, the Heavenly Father will destroy him, for the temple of the Most High is holy, which temple you are. So we're sent out to warn you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Seminole Native Indians what you could be doing and putting you at risk of being destroyed.
So we've covered the foods that we're not supposed to eat. We've covered the fact that you so-called Negro Latinos, male and females, are not supposed to be cutting the edges of your hair, and you males are not supposed to be shaving the edges of your beard. This is First Corinthians. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8. And reads, I desire therefore that the man pray everywhere, that the men, men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also, that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with propriety and moderation, not with braided hair, or gold, or pearls, or co costly clothing. So you Israelite women shouldn't be carrying yourselves like a walking uh, chandelier. You shouldn't have all the fancy clothing, the jewelry, the skimpy clothing, those are things that you should be trying to refrain from. But you tell a so-called Negro woman this, it's hard for her to receive it. It's hard for her to receive it because of Stockholm Syndrome. And our Lord told us this was going to happen. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 16. Moreover, the Lord says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and wanton eyes, walking in minching as they go, making a jingling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will strike a scab with the scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will uncover their secret parts. You daughters of Zion, you so-called Negro, Latino, and Seminole Native Indian women, you're not supposed to be dressing with skimpy clothing. You're not supposed to be dressing with skimpy clothing. Back to 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with propriety and moderation, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing, but which is proper for a woman for blessing godliness with good works. So our Lord tells the, the, the so-called Negro, Latino, Seminole Native Indian woman, according to your forefather's seed, you should be dressing moderate, modestly with propriety, what's appropriate 
whether you have a man or not, what's appropriate when you're going out and about, when you're outside of your household.